next guest says Presidents Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln, and Bill Clinton shared a very important trait. They were all partisan presidents. He details why partisanship is necessary in his new book, The Politicians and the Egalitarians, The Hidden History of American Politics. Sean Willens is with us this morning, a presidential historian uh, for a first on Fox Business interview. It's Sean, good to see you. Thank you so much for joining it's us. It's great to be here. So how does the level of partisan politics we're seeing today compare to what you've been studying? It's, it's in line with what other things have happened before. We've had deep, deep partisan divisions. I and mean, look, the, when the framers framed the Constitution of the United States, they didn't like political parties. They thought political parties were a bad thing. They were going to divide the country. But very quickly, political parties arose. We're too big a country. We have too many clashing interests for there not to be co some kind of focus for those, uh, for those divisions. And because we have a system that allows for the first past the post to win, it's going to mean that a third party is going to be marginalized. You're going to have two parties that are going to be fighting it out. Those two parties will be coalitions. Those coalitions sometimes are strong. Sometimes those coalitions come apart, as we're seeing in both parties today. But parties have always been the focus. Yeah, but don't, but don't you feel that, you know, the fact that you've got all of these different ideas, that's what creates checks and balances, which are so important. Wasn't that what the founding fathers were trying to do? Make sure that we had checks and balances in place. Absolutely. And inside the government itself, you know, when the parties actually win their elections and have people in government, then the House checks the, you know, the Senate checks, the, the Congress checks the presidency, Supreme Court, all of that. There aren't so many checks and balances inside party systems. I mean, they arise out of the parties themselves. So that's why you find things in the state they're in today, for example, where the things are very unstable. We, we, have, we have had moments when third parties emerged and became forces, and yeah. we've also had parties like the Federalist Party that came and went. Yeah. Are we at that kind of an inflection point now with so many just disruption inside the Democratic Party and inside yeah. the Republican Party? That's a good party? question. I, 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 it could be. Um, certainly the parties are going to be changing. Whether they keep the same names or not, you know, because the Federalists disappeared altogether, the Whig Party disappeared altogether. Whether they keep the same names or not, I'm not so sure. But you're seeing in both parties a fundamental breach on fundamental principles. And um, it could very well end up, for example, if, if Donald Trump were to consolidate control of the Republican Party, it would be a very different Republican Party than Ronald Reagan's Republican Party. Um, likewise, well, isn't that what happened with Barack Obama? I must see sure quite so much. Party? I think people might have thought it was going to be. I don't think it was ended up being as much. I think a lot of his supporters thought it was going to change the Democratic Party. I think in part, you see in the Sanders campaign, in fact, a lot of disappointment that Barack Obama wasn't the kind of president they wanted him to be. But so, can we get a third party coming out of this turbulent environment? We might, but I don't think it'll last very long. That's what uh, Peggy Noonan wrote this weekend, right? That a third party is forming, Dagan. It could happen. I mean, out of, um, particularly in the, out of the Republican mix. But I don't, they never last. Um, a great historian once said that third parties are like bees. They sting and then they die. Uh -huh. So are you telling okay. Hillary Clinton it's time to be uh, extra partisan? Extra partisan? Yeah. Uh, I think the, that, that Hillary Clinton will be partisan. I mean, I think that's what the... the, the well, she's become extra partisan, though. I mean, the, the, what's marked about, what's distinct about this year uh -huh. is the revolt against the political class. Yes. So I completely agree with the notion that partisanship is at the foundation of a civil society. No doubt about it. But the, the revolt this year is against the yeah. political class. Yeah. What do you think about term limits? to help prevent the polit political class from getting entrenched. Well, I never think the term is a too, like, too good idea because I think we ought to be run eff effectively by good professionals rather than by amateurs. But we have amateurs who stay there year after year well, after year. Then they year. become professionals. My, 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 point is only, <laughs> <laughs> my point is only this, that um, there are such things as nonpartisan partisans. In other words, you say, I'm running against you, for example, running against you, and I say, the problem with you is you're a partisan. I'm not partisan. It's a totally partisan statement. <laughs> Isn't that what Barack Obama tried to do? Yeah, exactly. Well, I think every politician tries to do that. Yeah. I mean, Thomas Jefferson was the master at this. He got up before the country and said, he was, he was the Republican running against the Federalists. He gets up before the country and says, we're all Republicans, we're all Federalists now, right? Except, <laughs> if you're my kind of Republic, Federalist, you come with me and the rest go away. I mean, he was looking to find a country that was going to be all one party, his party. Yeah. How do you characterize Bill Clinton as a partisan? He formed the Democratic Leadership Council, yep. known for its moderate positions, and then he worked with Republicans yes. to pass his agenda. So that really wasn't generally partisan. He kicked the Democrats to the side. He's been, well, it's called being a good political leader. Yeah, he um, went to the center and also in the second term. So. Yeah, I mean, the, the Democratic Party was in terrible shape, right, in the 1980s. It, was, it had been pretty well whopped by, by, by Reagan, and mm -hmm. it had to recover, and it had split even going back to the 70s. 
what Clinton did was to reform, to regroup the Democratic Party. He did a good job at it. And that's what he, that's what he set out to do. So it's, there are these other kinds of changes. It's not always third parties. It's not always apocalyptic or dramatic. It can be something about a change within a coalition. And I think that's what Clinton did. All right. We'll leave it there. Sean, good to talk with you. Thanks so Thanks much. So much Sean Willens joining us there. You